<laughs> and Quentin Tarantino might teach you a thing or two. He's a very smart man, you know? Exactly. I want to hear about, like, his life, and, and then I want to have sex with him. Because it's just iconic. Yeah, that would be the most iconic like, right? sex like, to be able to say, I fucked Quentin I fucked Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> yes, I'm in the designer. If I see her, then I got a bro. Yes, I am a dog with these diamonds on my collar. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, today I have a very special guest, um, Jane Wild, who I met in L.A. My best friend, Kirill, actually knows her well, and she goes to the content house and works for him sometimes, and he's the one who set me up with her. We were supposed to interview in L.A., but it didn't happen, so she was sweet enough to come on Zoom and talk to me. So it would be wow. ideal to have her in the studio, but she is kind of in the studio, right? Yeah, I feel like I'm there. You feel like you're there. And she's and she's rolling a joint, which just makes me love her even more. It's going to be a fun conversation. Very fun. So let's start with this. So Jane, you are from the East Coast. Yeah, so like just before we started this podcast, like 10 seconds ago, it came out that I'm from New York and... I swear I thought Kirill mentioned that to you because I thought like, well, that was, that's the, obviously the reason that we just vibe so well because yes. these post girls, we're just different. We're, we're diff like a different breed. breed. It's and, so different. And I feel I like East coast girls make it in California for the fact that everybody there is kind of just, I don't know you know, timid born and raised, but you come from the East coast with a hard attitude and you make it, God bless you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, so first and foremost, welcome. I'm so thank happy you. to have you I'm here. And um, so tell me about New York and when did you leave there and what school did you go to, like for high school and all that? What part of New York? So I grew up in Queens in a town called Forest Hills. Yeah which is like a Jewish area. I'm Jewish myself. Oh my God. No wonder why Kirill loves you. You're from yeah. New York and you're Jewish. Amazing. He always calls me like a Jewish mother. <laughs> like I'm like she's saying, I'm always complaining about something. Oh, same. That's part of but, the East Coast too. Yeah, it's definitely. Cause I'm like, I don't tolerate shit. Like if like on one day the pool was like, 100 degrees and I said to him I was like dude the pool's like 100 degrees and he was like always something and I'm like but the pool's 100 degrees and it's 100 degrees outside forgive me That's for wanting to cool down in a fucking pool exactly. man exactly. you know I just thought that was so funny but um yeah so I grew up in New York in Queens and I started doing sex work when I turned 18 yeah started because uh to be quite honest I just didn't want to have a regular job I didn't want to that's what I wanted to ask you is what made you what was the first opportunity you got for the porn industry that made you fall into it well I always like was kind of like into showing off my body it yep. was a way love that to, like you know feel comfortable because it's like I was teased a lot and made fun of I was like a late bloomer so yeah. you know I didn't like I got teased it. too yeah it's a thing most people got teased in at some, some way. point and it, yeah it still affects me to this day like it doesn't like hurt me but I think about it and I'm like damn you know kids could be really mean so and mean. they say things that stick with you oh 100 percent, and that's why kids Young kids are taking their own lives because mm -hmm. some twit at school says one thing to them and it, they don't realize that those opinions don't matter. So you got to be matter. you got to be strong blooded yeah. to make it through it, you know, Yeah, for sure. And it's like, so I was teased. And then as I was like, you know, a teen, a little bit older teen, but not yet 18, I started to be like, OK, like I like showing off my body. I like taking like pictures of myself. Yeah. Um, and I started thinking about like, you know, is there something that I can do with this? And I was working at American Apparel yep. as a sales associate um, and I had just turned 18 and uh, I'm not going to like 
it's a little hard for me to get deep into this situation because it was kind of traumatizing for me. But like to make a long story kind of short, I met someone they introduced me to the world of webcamming. Yeah. Is so is that how you started out with webcam first? That's how I started out. Um, and I just want to say like sex work is totally legitimate. Yep. And there's so many ways to be successful doing it. But there's also like every industry, there are creeps yep. that latch on and they look for vulnerable people that are misinformed or uninformed. And that's what happened to me. And I was 18 and I was, you know, taken advantage of by someone who wanted to make money off of me doing sex work, which is the definition of trafficking. Right. So So it didn't start out well at first then. You had a bad experience at first. Yeah, it was. And it was weird because like at the time I thought that that's how it was because I didn't have any any better. And it's still young. So it's like. I was doing all that and I thought it was totally legit, but I would have these like weird feelings like something is off. Like he would collect the money that I earned and like give it to me in cash. I always found that weird, but he was obviously like you said, making his own money off of you. Yeah, Yeah. dude, he was a fucking pimp. And some stuff happened and I reached like a turning point in my life about a year later, I was about to turn 19 and me and that guy, totally like parted ways yeah we parted I haven't heard from him thank god because you don't want to yeah I don't want to at all he's scary um but after that I kind of I felt a little lost and I was like what do I want to do now because I already was like a year into this shit putting myself out there on the internet And I was like, well, I can just, you know, start over and do something else with my life, but always have this like feeling of like knowing that my stuff is out there and I failed at this industry or I can try to do something else in this industry and, you know, keep it going. Right. So I decided to keep it going and I realized that I wanted to do porn. Yep. And were you a and, watcher of porn before you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So for that whole year and this guy, he would always say like, oh, it's so much better to do webcamming because nobody has to touch you. He thought it, there was something very wrong with like having sex for money, but yeah. oh, you're just showing off like totally fine. And see, very I'm like, totally, I don't have sex to- Often, often, Jane. I'm like, a, yeah. I'm, I'm a weirdo when it comes to that. It's very far and few between. But I feel like, wait, what did you just say before that? Where was I going? I had said um, that he felt like it was shameful to like have okay. sex. Okay. Yes. Me. Okay. So I'm. I, what I want to say is, I think it should be normalized, right? Mm-hmm. You know, porn industry. No one should look down on it. No one should judge it. Uh, with any sex work, right? Because at the end of the day, you got men who are fucking things left and right, but nobody judges them. And it's mm-hmm. just, it, it, it's a, st- it, it's, it, it pisses me off to be completely honest. Because everybody's yeah, I- human. Everybody has feelings. Everybody's going through their own shit, making it their way, the way that, you know, they want to go. And I just, I salute you for that. Thank you. Because it's, it's very uh-huh. admirable that you're co- this confident to do the things you do. Thank you. And I completely agree with you and feel the same way. I think not only is it not shameful, but it's very empowering because you're doing exactly what you want to do, even though society's literally telling you, like, you're disgusting. You're right. like, fuck it. I don't care. Right. Like, I'm still going to do what I want. Now, did um, your parents, did you live with your parents before this yeah, started? So I- and how did they feel? So when I basically explained that I wanted to do webcamming. I was still living in their house at the time in my bedroom. Yep. My childhood bedroom. So And they were still like, together, your father and mother. They're still together, yeah. And they they have a good relationship. They've always been like pretty open-minded, I would say, just That's about good. stuff. Yeah. So they so, weren't judgy. No, not at all. That's amazing. Very, very lucky in that regard. That's amazing. a lot of people, yeah, and it's like you can't even really blame people, especially like older people right. for feeling that way. Cause that's just like, it's what is normal to it's them. It's what's normal to them. Yeah. The older generations, you know, but it's like people thought 
Playboy was so amazing and great, exactly. right? For for such a, a long period of time back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, yeah. even the early 2000s. And it's like, for that reason, if that's okay and that's cool to be a Playboy bunny, what's mm-hmm. the difference? You know, you're still exactly. in an industry that you're, you're winning awards, right? Yeah. You got an AVN award for the best anal scene. Okay, <laughs> that's that's unbe- now I got to get into this. I got to ask you some okay. fucking questions about this. Let's go there now. So I've had it in the out hole once oh God. and it was my <laughs> Jesus Christ. God, forgive me for even saying this, but it was real. <laughs> it was real slippery down there. Right. And he decided that that was his cue to try to make it in the, the second hole. Mm-hmm. And he rammed it in. Right. I was like, oh, my God. I swear to God, I started crying. And that was the one and only time. And, you know, like, I want to know, if someone isn't doing anal, is it because they're doing it wrong? Like, is there, uh, how do you tell me? And do you enjoy it? Do you actually enjoy it? Yeah. So I enjoy it. um, But just, like, regular sex, like, pussy sex yep. sometimes you enjoy it and sometimes you don't sometimes right. it feels really good sometimes it hurts yep it's all just about you know the vibe and for me personally like the story that you just said that has happened to me so many times where and it's not even on purpose they just like whatever it may be their size their girth like if it goes in a certain way and you're not fully relaxed it feels like it's like a paralyzing pain. One hundred percent. It goes up your spine, and you're just like, like, oh my god, like I can't. And it happens, yeah. Even to like someone very experienced, I always am like telling them go really slow because it's a muscle. Like your anus is literally a muscle, so it. Is it, there like a perf- like a sorry to interrupt you, but is there yeah. a specific position? that is easier and more comfortable for you missionary for me missionary always because for me it's just the most relaxed yeah and you're on your back like you're laying down for doggy is like the worst as a first position because it goes the deepest so you want to like ease into it and not be like fucking wreck me right off the bat because it's like it just doesn't work that way that's not how anatomy works now Even yeah the stretchiest ones they're <laughs> more like this like right it's still it's still a muscle now have you had any really bad experiences while filming and have you had really good ones uh yes to both so i would just say like do you mean in general or with anal specifically? No, in general, not just with anal, just okay. like with filming and being yeah. in the industry. What are some of the, you know, bad experiences that you've had? So I'm lucky to say that I haven't really had that many That's bad good. experiences. Um, I know a lot of girls do because they come in and their representation does not have their best interest in mind. Yep. And these agents really are just looking to make a quick buck. Yep. And they don't, so many people have said to me, and when I say people, I mean older men who've been yep. in this industry a long time. They say, oh, the, the average career length for a girl in porn is three to six months. Almost like they're saying it like they're proud to be like driving all these girls out of porn. And it's like, so is there I, like a stereotype where there's a limit? Like, I mean, yeah, but it's not necessarily, it's for like a variety of reasons. And I would say that, yeah, a lot of it comes from girls having a negative experience within the first couple of weeks or months. And then they're like, this shit just isn't for me because that's what they have to go off of. Like you're setting the precedent right. for their whole career. Yep. So if you're starting off doing shady shoots with shady sites and weird people, then yeah, I can see why you would think that porn is not the most legit thing or not a right. good experience for you. I was lucky enough that I worked with like mostly pretty established companies right off the bat. Um, and my first agent, he, he's a piece of shit. But yep. for other reasons, he's pretty good at his job. And as far like, as taking care of you, like not scummy in that. No, sense. he's not like a piece of shit. He actually did like he did want the best for me. 
and the girls, I'm sure, but he had other issues. Yeah, yeah. everyone, um, everyone's he, got an issue or two. Yeah, he was one of the good ones, which is like, it's crazy to say that this dude is one of the good ones and he still has so many problems. Right. But um, a lot of these agents, like they'll, you know, they'll see a girl come in or they'll even recruit the girl from like some random website or even people like in public. They'll be like, have you ever thought about, you know, adult modeling? They'll make it sound really like sophisticated and tell you how much money you can make in a week. Yeah, And like you attract all different types of people, but especially like impressionable young girls and those girls, they'll come in and then it's like, oh, you're booked for, you know, backroom casting or some weird shady. I made that up, but like, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. They have to do a scene with some disgusting fat man with a five inch (laughs) dick that like it won't even show his face on. Oh my fucking God. What a nightmare that is. That's a nightmare yeah, in it's itself. Like, I don't care what I'm getting paid for that. We're not doing that. We're not going there. It's just <sighs> like, and then after, and then that company, for example, it's a made up company, but yeah. like stuff like that, it's like a lower level. You're not getting put out there in a way that you're being promoted and right. people are checking for you. It doesn't do anything to help your career. So yeah, you got a check and your agent got a check, but like, you're not getting the longevity. Right. And that's why they, because they're not getting anywhere in their career. The bookings dry up and they're like, what am I supposed to do now? Right. So, so it's, I forgot. Go yeah, ahead. You forgot, I forgot where I was. I forgot what that point started from, but I think I was saying that I was lucky to come in yes. and not have yes. that many bad experiences, but I have had a couple. Okay. But not enough to, 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 no. Okay, good. And and have you had really good ones? Have you ever accidentally, I don't want to say fall in love, but ever enjoyed someone so much that it ended up being not just on film? Um, So what I will say is I haven't had like, I know the exact like thing you're talking about, like you work with someone and you're like, oh my God. And there's chemistry, you know, just whatever. So the answer to that specifically is like, no, I haven't worked with someone and then been like so infatuated after, but I have had people where it's like, I'm infatuated with them and then I work with them and it's just like, not what you expect. Oh, the best thing ever. Oh, good. Well, yeah. I mean, usually it's like, if I'm already like into someone, it's because I know that they're like, kind of like sexually talented. Right, right. For me, that's a big part of attraction is knowing that somebody can like fuck me really good. One hundred percent. See that like, that's that's important. It, it is, and I will be the first to say when I'm in a relationship, I love sex. I think about I it all the time, right? But if I'm not, Jane. Oh wait, sorry, you're muted. What I'm happened? muted. Oh no. Can you hear I me? Muted my computer. Oh okay. okay. You're good um, now. I was gonna <laughs> say, in my wait, relationships, wait. when I'm in them. I love sex, but mm-hmm. if I'm not in one, I'm not yeah. the type of person to desire it, look for it, want it. I can go five years without it, right? But yeah. I also am a sexual person when I care about somebody, for sure. Yeah. Like, I'll get on a totally different level when I have feelings involved. So that's my... Um, reason why I could probably never be in porn and do what you do is because I have a problem with having sex with someone that I don't have feelings for. And that's something that you have to do. And does it affect your relationships? Like, have you had boyfriends through your career and has it affected um, them? Really? No. Like I haven't had many relationships I only just recently like for the first time ever dated someone um last year this guy I he works on a podcast oh really yeah and I I'm sure like people will be able to put two and two together because I used to like post about it and he talked about it publicly but um I dated this guy and it seemed like it was really fun for a while. We definitely like love bombed each other, which yep. is not a healthy thing to do. Yeah, it becomes like, an addiction, never, an obsession. Yeah, exactly. yeah. But I never like had that with someone. So I was just so happy and excited. And he, to the very end, he claimed that like my job did not bother him 
but I just had this feeling inside like it did. And that could be my own insecurities, right. my own issues with, you know, relationships and what I do like intersecting. But um, I'm talking to someone right now and I told him right off the bat, like, listen, you should know, like, I'm a porn star. Like I do this and, yep. you know, he thought it was cool. And he said, like, it doesn't bother me. Like, I think it's great. Like, you know, and we're not exclusive. I think I just need to like, I don't want to say take what I can get because I'm not desperate at all. Like, no, I'm cool single. but it's hard to find someone who's is. cool with it. You know yeah. what I mean? And they, everyone should not, be. Yeah. Like I'm not necessarily looking like I would never say that like, oh, I'm dying to be in a relationship. Me I'm either. Not. I love being single. It's the I best love thing. being single because like, again, like all the cool things that I get to do, I don't want to have like this underlying like guilt inside, whether right. it's like internalized from me or from them or whatever. I just don't want to feel that way. I don't want to be having a great scene with someone and a great experience and then be you know, worrying that, oh, what does this mean that I'm having so much fun with this person? What is yeah. it, how does it connect to that? Like, it just, none of it fucking matters. I just want to enjoy my life. Like I'm 22 years old. You're a baby. And d- dating someone like exclusively is just not something that I'm interested in. I tried it last year, did not work out. And it's just not for me right now. Like I really love. I just, like that. I love that for um, you. That's thank good. Thank you. That's and good. I'm kind of the opposite of you. Like I, I mean, obviously like feelings are really great. It makes it of even course, better. Of course, of course. But I don't need that. And uh, I just need them to be like, I, okay. You know, like when you fuck someone that you both have feelings for each other yeah. and the reason why it's different, you know that you don't, it doesn't need to be said. Like you just know it, you feel you it. Feel it. Yeah. So I like to have sex with people who make me feel like that, and then afterwards we can just go back to like being friends or whatever. Like that, I like to feel. I don't like boring, passionless sex, but I also don't need to like connect outside of sex. So like, that's what I was gonna ask you too, Jane. Is like when you go from filming and you film often, and you went to this relationship the past one that you had that it didn't end up working out are you able to detach like do you feel like it's an act with that person or are you actually you know is there passion and you're enjoying it versus a scene that you're just doing for work um so for that it was like with this particular person um we were just I came to realize that we were not really like sexually compatible which is the worst that's yeah, the, that me, that's the nail in the coffin Jane <laughs> it really was and for me internally it was like I started to like check out a little bit once I realized that which sucks to say but like that's, that's a, a really very important thing in a relationship because I do it for work so I need that personal time right. to be like really special and um fuck what the fuck was I saying you asked what did you okay so with this guy I wouldn't fake it I mean I would kind of like you know fake it a little bit with this guy yeah that's what I wanted to ask you is there some faking involved but then in my scenes I would be feeling like not faking it but I would be like second guessing myself like like am I doing too much right now like just weird questions that I would never think of if I wasn't dating somebody. Right. And I just started realizing like, it's not worth the internal struggle mentally with like no. dealing with this. Like I love my job. I've always been good at my job and always loved it. The fact that you love it is, is very important. That's great. Yeah, it is very important to love what you do or you'll hate your fucking life. 100%. Love That's what you like, do and you'll never work a day in your life. Right. That's really how I feel. And uh, You know, it's like certain days at work, I'm like, fuck, this really is work right now. I've never had a day that made me be like, I don't want to do porn anymore. That's amazing. Three and a half years. But this relationship with this dude that was making me think like, fuck, I don't want to be in a monogamous anything. Right. Making you question. Like monogamy. So I like, I have my little rotation of guys that I just like, 
and it's not just sex like I'm friends with all of them like hang out we can hold a conversation have dinner conversations Um, very important somebody witty that can challenge your mind you know important and it's like as long as people realize and know that like I'm not trying to like build anything so they don't need to get spooked and don't try to spook me like let's just have fun let's just enjoy life that's like and like you said you're so young right so you have all these years to continue being in the industry you're in doing what you love and then you know, if you're done at one point in your life when you're fucking 45 years old or whatever it may be, right? Then you then you look for love then. If you don't exactly. need it now, what's the fucking point of the stress? You enjoy yeah, what you do. Like, my whole thing is I'll never be, like, looking for it. Like, it's always, I'm always just going to be living my life. And, and if then, it falls in your lap, it falls yeah, in your lap. Yeah, exactly. I find that when you look for love is when you find the things wrong. that kind yeah. of feel and look like love but they're not it's not what it really is and 100%. I've never been in love so to this day I don't know what that actually feels like I know what it feels like to be emotionally attached and infatuated but at, it's like you just you can't love someone like that quickly that's my opinion no like, I agree I agree and, and you have a great head on your shoulders for a 22 year old it must be the east coast thing I agree. And just uh, my experiences, like stuff I went through um, has really shaped me to like, you know, you can have bad experiences, but if you let it define you, at least let it, you know, make you a wiser person right. going forward. Let Don't it make let you it better. Make Take it as a lesson. Yeah. Be a fucking hero and show other people what you didn't realize before. Right. I um, love that. I love that. So let's go into a couple fan questions, right? We got, we, we got a few here. Hold on. So um, a friend of mine, a girl I work with, she yeah. loves, loves anal sex, right? Oh, great. Loves it. Fucking loves it. So when I told her I was interviewing someone who won a pretty much an pretty, it's an Oscar of porn, let's be honest. Yeah. So you pretty much have an Oscar, right? So she says, Jojo, okay, how do you embrace the first three seconds or inches? Okay. (laughs) Good Uh, question. Great question. And my answer is just the other week, I did a scene with a guy. His name is Dredd. He's a black guy. He's like six foot five, I think. Oh, God, does he have a... Yeah, fucking. Like literally an arm. <laughs> like you're doing that, but it's it's actually the girth and length of an arm. Oh my fucking god! Can you imagine? Exactly. Yes, and it's like okay, when it comes to normal dicks, the three inches. It's like all I do is I just go to like my happy place. Like I basically meditate, and you just embrace the feeling. Like if you're thinking of it in in pain terms yeah then you're gonna be like expecting and looking for pain if you're just like this is gonna feel amazing like just embrace the the feeling of it going in then you'll be fine but that's with normal size dicks not when with it, not with dread dicks right yeah when it comes to like <laughs> arm size arm size dicks i guess i would say just like hold don't hold your breath i was about to say hold yep. your breath but don't hold your breath hold on grab something yeah or rub your pussy for me it's like if I am getting like stimulated then it it's like it opens up a little more yes it opens up more and also some people they like pain they're like masochistic so if you think of it in that way like oh I'm like this is like torture it's like in a fun yeah yeah it's like fun torture you're like (laughs) Because it's going to pay off after. <laughs> right, right. It's so it's fun to watch it. You embrace it. I love yeah. that. So. Got to hold on. It she, feels good after a while. She has another good one. Good. She says, yeah. what's your favorite position to be placed in while receiving the holy rail? See what she did oh, there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the holy rail. <laughs> so, I mean, I just like missionary I mean, I like all positions, right? but I really like missionary because it's just like the most intimate. And just because I like to have like a lot of sex, I still like it to be intimate. I don't want them to be like, you know, covering right. your face and right. shit. Like 
can still be all up on me. Um, I really like missionary where you're lying and then they're like just on top just of on you. Just on top of you. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> like get our body. <laughs> like it feels good. Guys, let's do it together. Come on, Jane. How's yeah. it go? Because <laughs> I never get to do that in porn. So that's right. like special for like personal life where you don't have to worry about the camera and like opening up and your angles. It's just purely like pleasure, just indulging. Right. It's my all right I love that and she said what's your before prep routine is that a thing do you have to prep like what is it like um what should you do for the yeah. people that don't do it let's give them some yeah. some pointers so <coughs> I'm assuming this is for anal yes <coughs> for anal like regular scenes I just fucking wake up take a shower oh yeah or, no we, we, not uh, vagina prep is nothing we don't need that we're talking about that ain't the anal prep okay so for me i will say everyone's different so exactly what i do might not be working for you or the way someone else yeah but it, this is like a basic outline and you can tweak it to fit with your body and the way your schedule is and yep um so i like i like to give myself a lot of time I think that time is like a really big thing when it comes to like being clean. Yeah. Being clean is the number one thing with anal. Like yep. for me, I can't 100% find all there's shit in my body. I just fucking can't. It's disgusting. Yep. 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 Shit and sex do not, they shouldn't they, go yeah, They should not go together. They're, so that's the thing. So together. how do you make it so that there's never, you know what I mean? Like I feel like I don't even know. Because it was so traumatizing when it happened to me that, yeah. you know, I, I'm not saying I'll never do it, right? If I, I find the right guy, yeah. you know? You just need to, you need to, like, get, like, not get over, but, like, be able to move on from that experience. And, yeah. like, I think just Torture. education and, like, learning how to do it the right way is, like, the best way to do that. Um, so when I say time, I mean, like, the more time that passes, yep. just the better things will be. Like, for example, I like to eat a nice meal, nothing super crazy that will like make your stomach all weird, just yep. a basic thing that goes easy. And then you just wait. You eat your last meal and you wait. I like to wait, let's say 12 hours. Okay. So if I eat my last meal at 6 p.m., 7 p.m., and then the next morning is when I start prepping prepping. So then you have that 12 hour period for your body to digest what you just ate, get it, you know, through your system. Yep. And then in the morning it comes out the natural way. And then after that, and you haven't eaten anything else, your tract is like not moving anymore. It's, it's still, it's calm. So when that happens, that's when you get down on the floor. Uh, you take an enema. Yeah. I like to eat an enema it. holy moly okay we're getting into how it's done yeah oh yeah an enema like you you literally have to shoot water up your butt and then it becomes like a river and the enemas like, are like the squeezy things right yeah. like the old school some people some people use like the shower enemas like a reusable one it kind of yeah. looks like a whoopee cushion um don't like those i just prefer the disposable ones they're easier they're smaller it's just like, it's my routine. It's just how I've done it. Um, and so it I'll works for you. Up. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Like you might, somebody else might like something else. Um, but this is just like my method that I've perfected over three years. Um, <laughs> You've literally, perfect <laughs> I've talked to a few people that are like, I watch her religiously and I'm like, really? oh yeah. I yeah. I talked to it's a so few weird. East Coast people that, that know exactly who you are. To this day, it's so weird that people know who the fuck I am. I'm like, I'm not. Do you get recognized that. on the street? That's another question uh, that I have. Not that often. It actually just happened for the first time. I have a crazy story to tell you okay. after I finish telling you about the anal. Okay. Um. So long story short, like, if you have the disposable fleet enemas, do not ever squirt the liquid that it comes with into your body because these enemas are not made for anal sex. They're made for constipation. So it will make you, it, your butthole will just convulse. Like it won't, you won't. So be you need to, to do water. Yeah. 
So you dump out the solution and put like warm water. What I like to do is I get on the ground and I'm like, you're kind of in like spoon position. Yep. So you're not doggy. Think about your body is like a slope. Yep. So when you're in doggy, let's say you squirt water, the water's going so deep because it's like going right. down this right. thing. It's so technical. No, but, but if spoon, th- I want to know. Yep. Yeah. If you're in spoon, you're kind of more just like just hanging out. So it's it's just going to chill Right. there it's not going to go so so deep into you because if you got so your ass in the air the deeper it goes yeah. right yep yeah exactly and like <laughs> you want it to go deep enough but not too deep that it won't come out because then that is like a nightmare so there's a technique to it yes there is a technique so oh, i wish i could show you guys if we were in person <laughs> show, we show me in july i want to so, see <laughs> but like yeah so i just get in spoon position and then you basically just squeeze the bottle and squirt that water into your asshole and then i lay there for a few seconds then i get up i walk around a little bit and when you start to feel like the pressure like oh that wants to come out yeah do what comes naturally and there's gonna be stuff of course because it's normal and then you just do it again and again. You refill it, squirt it, shit it out. And eventually, so if you ate correctly yesterday, the water will be clear. And once the water's clear, it then you know it's clear. Yeah. So you could put a fist, you could put a dick, like shit will not come out on it. That's it. But that's, that's, that's important though, to know, okay, I got to. 12 hours before, got to give yes. myself time, make sure yes. the track is closed, you know, yes. and do it that way. It's always better to give yourself more time than less. I like to be, even if my scene isn't until 2 p.m. that day, like I'm not going to have a dick in me till 2. I like to be cleaning out by 6, 7 a.m. Yeah. And then I just don't eat for the whole day. So that's the only bad part of anal in porn. In person, I like, do whatever the fuck you want. Right, I would, right. I wouldn't right. starve. But on, f- yeah, but on film. But like, as a pro, like, it's just something I've, you know, come accustomed to doing. Is and like, you are a yeah, pro indeed. Cool I'll eat at, like, 4 p.m. that day, and I'm like, oh, this is so nice. I, I'm i not saying starve. Nobody starve. Right, like, don't, we don't want to starve, but, especially stone as it's hard to starve. Yeah, you know? it's not good for you. It's the worst part of my week when I have to, like, eat my last meal for the night and it's like 7 p.m. I'm about to smoke and I'm like I just know I'm gonna have the munchies so bad yeah at 10 p.m. I can't eat but it's worth it because I love anal and I love performing so you technically when you vagina sex versus anal sex you prefer anal uh when it comes to scenes like performing I always prefer to do anal because visually it looks dope yeah for sure Anal porn is just really cool. It can get freakier, nastier. In my opinion, the best performers ever all did anal and crazy stuff. Um, and you're following and in I- those footsteps. When did you win that award? How Last year, right? So you were 21? Oh, this year. Yeah. Congre- so like- Congratulations, my baby. Yeah. It was like, but it was the equivalent of like the Oscars was on fucking right this year. so it's like okay yeah you won an oscar but it's like you weren't actually there to get on stage and i get to walk on stage no. guess what though I, I hope I, yeah you're gonna win another one i know Thank it you. I and really you'll be able to walk i could win it but if it's not one of the ones they announce on stage i won't get to like you know give that speech and have that moment i think that you're on such a good track at such a young age the fact that you've already won one and you're only like three four years in right two. but the other you've one won was, two it was for a group scene okay like so you have two oscars let's make that clear let's be clear she's got two oscars for born okay and there's gonna be a third and a fourth and she's gonna get her walking speech i have faith in you my babe manifesting it for me thank you you're welcome i'm manifesting it so i think these are people that you sent over possibly for the questions um so this is on instagram if stoner nightclubs were a thing would you go what if duh Um, duh that's literally (laughs) that's a dream yeah i don't even drink are you that was like i mean does a bear shit in the woods what a dumb question yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of obvious. 
<laughs> but yeah, I would fucking sure. love that. Dude. Okay. Like I wish nightclubs allowed weed. I would go out every every night, every weekend. I'd be in the club all night. I'm surprised <laughs> LA doesn't have one of those. Just for the I, fact. I feel like they should. Yeah. It's still like, the technicalities with the law, but like just fucking do but it. But didn't man. they have weed in food places? They had like places you could go to eat. Yeah, and they, they had that. Uh, there was um. Uh, like a cannabis cafe. Yeah, I never got to go, but like that's yeah, cool to like, me. Like you know, it's that's amazing. I think just incorporate weed into whatever because it's like I just find it annoying that drinking is like so normalized, and that's fine. Like even though it's terrible for you, that's fine. But don't demonize like cannabis at the same time when no, it's, it's fucking legal. It's legal, and alcohol is so much worse for you. But it's like. Oh, it's happy hour, like mimosa Sundays. Like it's like so normalized in our society. So true. And, and I should be able to just have a joint in my mouth wherever I go, if you ask me. Um, it's like, well, if you're at like an outdoor cafe, yeah. I mean, I get some people don't like the smoke itself, but listen, they give it to fucking cancer patients, people with anxiety, people with PTSD. Like it actually helps people. For, for, yeah. I, I mean, alcohol might help you for a few fucking hours, but then what? You wake up, you feel like shit. You, you feel like shit. Oh, yeah. I thought of something that I always wonder, and I wonder if you know the answer. So, like, you just said when they give like medical marijuana to like, like cancer patients yep. or something when they're having chemo i was always under the impression well okay i don't know i have two ideas of what that could be Tell i me. feel like maybe is it like a pill or something like normal that you take but it, it makes you have the effects of it like the thc or are they just fucking toking like a big ass doink after chemo <laughs> like so, i don't know so because here's the thing right like you think of someone with lung cancer they're gonna give them you know, weed. I get what you're saying. It's kind of like, yeah. do, they, do they just give them an edible type thing that they yeah, can suck like on? Yeah, like a normal way of consuming because it's medicine. Right. Them. So my my uncle and godfather passed away this year. Um, he had melanoma and um, it just ended up spreading and taking over his body. And um, he, he tried smoking um he had an experience where one was really smooth and nice and then he had another one where it hurt his throat yeah. and um so he was like have th he had these mints that he would just suck on and it was thc it yeah. really helped him and then he had he had thc cream and he would put yeah. it on his elbow because he had pain and yeah. gone so it's That's like fucking crazy. it just depends you know and um yeah. But the same person said, any chance of Jane and Gia Durza, I don't even know who that is, doing a wrestling type scene? <laughs> Bro, I'm sorry. This is not the type of questions that I want to be answering. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go to the, the next one. It was like probably yes. Uh, yeah, okay. One of the friends. But like, dude, like. You you can just ask me that on OnlyFans. Right. Why like, are you gonna like, ask that here? Media, it's a podcast. Like ask something cool. How does she keep her booty round and thighs thick? Does she train with a trainer? I do. First of all, thank you. I appreciate that. That I was uh, Heather Martin Leaf who asked that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I do work with a trainer. I've been going with a personal trainer for like two years now. Um, and it's something that I decided to do because I have a lot of anxiety about like food and the way I look in yeah. pertaining to what I eat. Um, my mom has a eating disorder, so okay. I don't have an eating disorder, but I have thoughts like disordered thoughts where yeah. I, but I recognize it and I'm like, that's not healthy to think that way. Like I said, good but, head on your shoulders. Yeah. Thank you. you know. Um, so I train because I really love food yeah, and I don't love the way that I feel sometimes after I eat foods that I like, Right, like I, I tend to like feel down on myself. And I think if I train, that gives me a really good balance to like be able to enjoy to the like food feel, you want and work. Yeah. Out. To just yeah. feel comfortable living my life as a fucking person and not feeling so guilty about being a human and indulging. And I never did it to ch change my body. I, just did it to feel 
healthy and good about myself. So I love I'm that. glad it's changing my body. For yeah, you, you're, you're, you look amazing, babe. Your body Thank is you. amazing. And it's so <laughs> funny because I saw you in person and you're, you're not, you're a tiny little thing. Yeah. But you got this amazing booty and curves oh, and yeah. just Thank it's you. amazing that you take what you do with that tiny little figure. That's that's yeah, professional if you ask that. me. Yeah, it's true. Um, OK, this is random. Who would you rather have dinner with Steve Carell or Quentin Tarantino? Oh, my God. <laughs> That's a really hard question because this person obviously knows that I fucking love The Office. Yeah, I love Tarantino movies. It's, he's my favorite. I love uh, I love Tarantino like, movies too. And but Steve Carell is is hysterical. He's so fucking cool. Like I'd dude. I'd have to go with Steve Carell, but you tell me who you would. Listen, okay, I'm gonna go with Tarantino just because I feel like he is more weird. Than Steve Carell, so Definitely I would like an interesting. Yeah, Steve Carell. I think I would just be like so starstruck that I'm like, <laughs> you I'm wouldn't even Michael Scott. Like yeah. I can't talk yeah. to you right now. <laughs> and Quentin Tarantino might teach you a thing or two. He's a very smart man, you know. Exactly. I want to hear about like his life, and and then I want to have sex with him because it's just iconic. Yeah, that would be the most iconic. Like, Right? Sex like, to be able to say I fucked Quentin I fucked Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> I want Quentin if you're watching. Let's me. let's manifest this. Qu- Man- All right. Not only is she going to be able to walk on stage at the Avian Awards, but she is going to be able to have sex with Quentin Tarantino one day. Quentin, if you see this, go to the 2022 Avian Awards. I'll meet you there. <laughs> okay, it, it's a date, Quentin. If you see this, yeah. um, okay. Always heard Jane was a crazy loud burper. Is that true? <laughs> no, it is not true. Um, sources, dude. Slim Jim, Tim Sim. That's fucking who has that. Okay. Um, no, I, I don't. Okay. I'm not. And have um, you thought, <laughs> what are you, what's your thoughts about India? Somebody asked. India. Um, I like Indian food. It's really amazing. And... Uh, yeah, I don't really have any opinion beyond that. Yeah, me, <laughs> I don't know much. Me either. Tips for men on how to proper... Okay, this guy. Uh, this is going to be one of those questions you don't want to answer, but, uh, you know, oh, the men it. need to hear it. Um, yeah. Tips for men on how to properly eat out a woman and help her reach her orgasm. Okay, that's... No, that's fine. Like, I don't mind answering sex questions. It's just like... He's very basic. Like, can you do this kind of scene? When will you work with this person? That's like, something they can ask you elsewhere. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, Interesting, Interesting ones are good. Yeah, okay. So when it comes to eating pussy, like, I can't really give you a blanket answer because everyone is so different. And the reason I know this is because I've had guys eat me out and they say they really like eating girls out, which yep. is like, cool. I've had that too. Do it, and I can just tell that some other girl told them this was amazing and like the best way to eat. And every girl is different. And they just do. Yeah. And they just do that every time. Cause it's like, it's just the same shit. Like they, okay. The best thing to do truthfully is like switch it up, like try a bunch of different things and just see what they seem to be the most into and then go from there. And also you can like be vocal and ask like, if do you like, like this? Do you do. like that? Yeah. I like the talk and when I like somebody. Yeah, I, I like the too. interaction. Um, but yeah. I mean, you know, that that's true. There really is no tips, guys, because Yeah, you just have to feel out your partner. Like for me, I really like I don't like when guys like suck my pussy. Oh like, my god, I fucking I hate that. that. It hurts. It hurts my pussy lips and they get really wrecked. And they and think so that you're pussy. enjoying it. They think yeah, you're enjoying the fuck out the of it. Too. And it's like, like, get away. Yeah, what the fuck? Like, I'm not a nipple down there, and you're not a exactly. tool. Uh, you're not a fucking baby. Stop sucking yeah, on you're the. Not, yeah, not what the fuck? Girl. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So such like such a mistake. Yep. But I like, um, I like when they use their tongue kind of like like an engine, like a motor. Yep. Like, yep. Really <laughs> like a vibrator. Yeah. I, yeah, I need that, and I like that, and a lot of other girls too, and some probably don't. So right. you can never just know; you just have to feel it out. That's See, I'm it. more of the like, I will enjoy. I like the softer, um, yeah. the slower, the touching mixed with, 
you know, that's, yeah. that's what works for me. So like I said, and like you said, it's different for everybody. Yes. That's the proof right there. That we're complete opposites. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. And, oh. and this, this is actually a very good friend of mine and her husband, um, on the phone today, when I was on the phone with her, she had me on speaker and he openly said, I have watched Jane a million times. You're going to really be talking to the real Jane Wilde. And I'm like, yes, not live in the flesh, but live on the zoom. And, um, you got to answer these questions for him. Okay, they, great. They, happy. they are some sex questions, but you, but okay. you got to answer cause he's a big fan. Um, have you ever done DP, which they put in quotations what that means for me? Cause I would never know double, double penetration, one in each hole. So I feel like the biggest fans would definitely know that I have done that. Yeah, so that's probably, he just wanted you to announce it. Yeah. I, I mean, I love it. I thought I had done more, but I just recently counted and I've done like maybe a little over 10 in the last like two and a half years. That's still pretty established. It's, it's a good amount. Yeah. Some people do zero. Right. Exactly. Um, and I really love it. I think it feels fucking crazy and when I say crazy that's not bad it's just like very intense like it's a unique experience yep. you'll never feel something like that unless you do it wow yeah see it. that that ins that's inspiring to you those that have it. never tried that. Yeah, maybe I will Jane call. maybe <laughs> maybe I will they wanted to know too have you ever done DAP double anal okay. penetration so I have I've done it now. Uh, I don't know if I should say. Okay, well, I've done it three times. Okay. Only two of them have come out, but there's one waiting somewhere in the abyss. Uh, yep. To drop. Floating so, in the archives, waiting to come out. Yeah. So, fans, like, keep your eye out. It'll be out in a couple of months, probably. Um, but yeah. I did one, and then I did, I did the first one in January 2020, and the second in November. And then I just did this other one like this past month. And yeah, dude, that is like. Is that enjoyable? Like, what's that like? And do you have, have you ever had two dread like, uh, you know, no. the two? Okay, thank no, God. Because no. that's not tolerable. And it's like, yeah, I think with when it comes to double anal, there's a certain point when I would be like, okay, I don't, it doesn't feel good. It's like too much. Yep. Um, even I have limits. Yeah, but of course. Well, that's what that's what I wanted to know. What is your yeah. limit, you know? But when it's two average size dicks, honestly, it just feels like one giant dick, but it's like hotter because it's so freaky. Yeah. Like, and the, usually the guys that do that kind of thing, they do it because they're like, it turns them on to like yep. turn a girl out like that. Like a lot of the European guys in porn, they just like. I feel like every it. guy kind of fantasizes about anal, right? And anal for sure but for they're sure like not thinking about rubbing their dick on another guy's dick yeah no no, no yeah <laughs> maybe not the double but but i feel like every guy just wants that you know like the accidents like the accidental slipping in yeah. with no 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 you knew what you were doing you wanted to go in that hole um right. now they want to know have you ever had three in no. one that's yeah. fucking crazy and you you'd have to have the three of the fat five inch uh, dicks we talked about for that yeah. to be tolerable. No, but the people, they couldn't be fat because it's like, it, at that point when you're putting three dicks in one tight hole, it's not even the, it's like you can jam three dicks in there. You can get anything in there if you stretch like that, but their bodies, it's like you have to like, yeah, how the fuck? They'd have the to be like on it is like, It will usually be either the girl is in cowgirl or in like reverse or missionary. And then like two guys from underneath will go in and then one guy will come way over top. And like, basically his ass is rubbing the chest of like the middle the guy. guy. Right. Which the guys are going to be rubbing on each other. It's inevitable. So that's not necessarily something that I'm like interested in doing. Have other people um, done it? I've never seen that, but is that a thing? Yeah. <laughs> There's um there's a website like called Legal Porno. Yeah. It's a it's a hardcore anal site. So like the most vanilla thing that they do on that site is just regular anal. And then they do double anal, DPs, gangbangs, piss drinking. Oh my god. 
like now what do you what's, what's your outtake on piss drinking i've done it you've done it i and only like doing it if it's like i'm really turned on by yeah. the guy and i want to be like submissive right like i won't do it for just anyone i've only done it like a couple of times for like you know right certain right. people certain people wow yeah. See, because I've always, I've always wondered about that. If that's something yeah. the girl actually is into, or is it something? But you just said, you'll, if you're yeah. submissive and you're in that state, it's something yeah. you you actually will enjoy. Yes, and I think because you like the freaky people, stuff. I do. I mean, certain freaky stuff. Like everyone has their preferences. Yeah, and I have my preferences. Um, but a lot of stuff I can get down with, or I can at least be open minded to get down with it. Well, I feel like that's why you've had the success you've had is because you. you've yeah. been open-minded. All right. Now, some of my questions before we go. I want to know about your doggy. Can we can we bring him in or her? Yes, he's a boy. And he's a he's boy. <gasps> What's person. his name? His name is Scout. Oh, my God. How old is he? Oh, hey, Papa. He just turned one. Oh, like, my God. He's a baby. Oh. Yeah, he's so cute. So I lost my dog um, one year ago tomorrow. And oh, I'm so sorry. The, uh, and he was a Maltese. He was 14 years old. Um, it happened over quarantine. You know, the vet had to come to the house and all that. And yeah. it was the worst pain I've ever felt in my life because I feel like dogs, right? There's a certain type of bond with a dog. They can't do you any, they can't do any, any wrong to you, right? They're just, you're the best thing in the world to them. So it's yeah. like someone who can never piss you off, never do anything wrong, just loves you with all their heart. It's very devastating to, so I'm glad he's won. You've got many years to go so many years but it's like the way I've been thinking about it like sometimes I have these random moments where I'm like like I'm gonna be in my 30s when like that time comes around it feels like so far away but then I know like time just goes like that like that I swear like, once you turn 18 yeah. like I'm, I'm about to be 23 and I've been doing porn for three and a half years and it's just like I have no idea where the time went Where, when's your birthday uh, September oh you're in September are you a yeah. Libra yeah I love Libras oh thank you one of my best best friends she's like my sister Stacy she's a Libra and I find I'm a cancer I find that I get along very well with the you know the, the balance the scales yeah. of Libra like I really I like Libra's personality so maybe that's why I love you thank you um uh, what was i saying did i interrupt you oh, yeah. no it's okay um yeah i was saying oh, about like you, in your 30s time goes up so fast yeah. and it's like i still feel like i just got him like last august like it doesn't feel like it was that long ago but it's already a year has been really yeah. bizarre with time like it doesn't feel real it must feel nice though for you like after you go to work to be able to come home and have him you know, yeah. especially where you're like me and so happy just with not having any relationship, right? Because I've been there, Jane. I had a 10-year relationship and then a three-year relationship, and I hated them both. So I, I, I had the same boyfriend from 15 to 25, and then oh I – had Yeah, a long time. And That's he, your whole life. Yeah, it's like I've known him half my life, right? So like when you broke up, what, what did you do, like – at that point. so he started cheat so he was a he was an avid cheater right which was you know unfortunate but i still loved him forgave him gave him chance after chance he was young so i was semi understanding where you know 15 16 17 18 even into your early 20s guys want to be sluts right that's that's when you go to college that's when you you know you want to jump on everything so i feel like i forgave give him for everything he's done. But the last thing he did, he started cheating on me with someone who had the same name as me, which I've stated before, and um, got her pregnant. So, you At know. At that point, it's like, okay. It's uh, not, yeah, and I was yeah. doing my own thing, and the thing was is he was doing that, but the second he would hear about me hanging out with somebody, forget about it. You know, it was like a... 
so upset and well, how are you doing this? It's like you just fucking knock someone up. Get the get the oh, fuck out of here. Um, so yeah. So I, I mean, I just feel like after experiencing both the relationships I experienced, I realize that I'll never settle. Um, I know what I want now. I'm I'm very strong willed, and um, now I want to dedicate these next year. You know, I'm 32, so. T- Time's a ticking, but I want to dedicate these next years into just building my career and getting somewhere and being happy with myself and who I am and, you know, be financially stable. And then if I meet a guy and I fall in love with him, great. But it's like you said, I'm not looking for it at all. I'm, I've never been on a dating website. I've never had a fucking Tinder. I've never had any of that shit. I just don't, I don't need it. And I feel like a lot of people my age, it's like, you need a house, you need a baby, you need a husband. But I don't think like that. I'm so happy w- without it. A lot of people I know that got married young, they're already getting divorced. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, unless you're sure, real yeah. fucking sure, which I feel like is hard these, these days. It is hard. And another thing is that um, if you're not content with yourself and you have like some self-work to do, then getting in a relationship is not going to change that. It's actually only going to amplify yep. that because the other person is going to be noticing and affected by your problems that really should only be affecting you. Yeah, like they, you project. Should, they project. Yeah, exactly. Don't put it on other people to fix you and make you a happy person. It's like you need to be internally content with yep. your life and who you are completely alone. Like, I truly think that once you like are truly content saying, if I never see another person, as long as I have me and myself, that is, yep. And then is when you start to invite people and you grow with them. Yep. They can't replace any of you and vice versa. You can't like be something for someone. Definitely not. And I've found as I get older, I get more and more, confident with myself and who I am and I notice that you know I'm I'm riddled with anxiety right it's something I struggle with and I realize that for me to not have to deal with the stress of laying your head down at night and thinking oh my boyfriend's fucking a b and c for me Mm -hmm. it's I got to the point where I was like I'm happy with me and like I said to you, I can go fucking five years. I do not care. There are very few people in this world that I find attractive that I would even give a chance to. And mm-hmm. in the experiences where I've hooked up with people in the past that weren't those two boyfriends, there was only a few. It was never worth it. You know, yeah. it was never, I never got off. It was not like a, 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 a worthy experience. So it's like, I don't do that. I, I don't. If I don't have a connection with someone, forget about it. There's no orgasms happening. There's, there's nothing for me. Yeah. And it's amazing that you like know that. And I wish a lot of people would like, you know, know what they want or at least like be honest with themselves. Takes because, a long time. Took me yeah. till this age to to not give a fuck about what other people think. I used to always care what people thought. I don't give a fucking shit what people think anymore. And that's, and that's a really important thing. You, you know, and I feel like for you, that's, even though you have these thoughts and things that, you know, whatever it may be, you're still very confident. And I can tell by the way you speak and the way you carry yourself and you're admirable for what you do. And like we, to reverse it should be normalized it should never look be looked down upon a job's a job especially if you love it all the power to whoever loves their job whatever it may be I would agree and I think um I think that if other industries other than sex work were you know scrutinized as closely yeah I think people would find a lot of problems and issues and things to complain about in those industries too, but because it's sex work and it's like sex, people are very sensitive about it because you could be like, for example, like a politician that wants to like ban sex work or something. Yep. He looks all fucking tough and has this authority and he's an alpha. And then at fucking home, he's like addicted to, you know, like sissy porn or something. Yeah, or like shit. cheating like, on his wife, but, could, but yeah, wants it to. Them, it, it makes them vulnerable. Like sex is. Pe- showing people for who they really are 
it makes you vulnerable it makes you exposed and that makes a lot of people very uncomfortable it's not that it's morally wrong or there's something horrible it's a normal thing it just scares people I think it scares them and they don't want it to be out there so they're trying to get rid of porn they're trying to say porn is dangerous like you need to abstain from watching porn it's just people fucking it doesn't happen it happens in real life what the fuck that's what I'm saying yeah like even if it's not exactly the same like well in movies you know there isn't fucking buildings that explode and like do you know what I'm trying yep. to say? Like stuff that happens in movies does not happen always the same way in right. real life. It's exaggerated because it's a fucking movie for entertainment. So why can't the porn industry be like that, right? It's like you're you're acting, you're you're in your craft, you're a professional at it, and it should be the same. Just like yeah. looking at it as a movie. If you can if you can exaggerate in a movie, why People are having yeah. sex every day. What the fuck? You know what I mean? It's not something. Yeah. And I think too many people enjoy porn for them to ever really take it away. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to be taken away, but there's a war going on right now where this guy who writes for the New York Times, he's yeah. a big columnist for them. And he teamed up with this, this group called Exodus Cry, which they're like a religious group, but they're on like a, crazy anti porn hub specifically porn hub yep. crusade and he teamed up with them to write this op ed basically saying that porn hub hosts like thousands of videos of like abuse and like underage people not verified not a verified fact by any means but people see that and then they bug out and Visa and MasterCard actually stopped working with Pornhub. See, I, um, I did see an article about Pornhub as far as a couple episodes getting out where the people didn't give their consent or there's yeah. some sort of battle with that, right? Yeah, and it's like, look, that stuff is fucking terrible and it's not okay that that happens, but in my experience, Pornhub like there's a million tube sites where people upload these fucking videos everywhere not just Pornhub Pornhub has been the one site that actually like will communicate with you and like help you get the video taken down if you say like I'm in this and I didn't consent to it being uploaded they don't want trouble they honor it it yeah they were acting like Pornhub was like purposely hosting like rape videos which like that's not, yeah. It's just not fucking true. But like, see, I'm that's sorry. the thing. People who are unhappy for whatever reason, that the people that are watching sissy porn when they get home, right? It's like, it, don't you have something fucking better to do? I mean, for the people that experience it, it you know, for the people that experience it, that that is terrible. Like if a video gets out and it, you, you, know, right. you don't give your consent, that's terrible. But that doesn't mean fucking axe the whole operation, you know? Dude, they were like trying to you can't abolish porn and you can't abolish Pornhub. Like, never mind the fact that billions of people watch porn and a lot of people do pay for porn, even though they want you to believe that nobody does. Yep. Like, some people yep. really do. Dude, pe- we make our fucking living this way. Like, that's people's income. There's people who were only uploading on Pornhub that had to, like, completely change their business model because they lost a huge part of their income because people just were not these major credit card companies were like you can't spend money on this site that gets billions of views a day you can't and it's just like it's not fair no it's not fix the problems without trying to tear down like you said the whole establishment it's not going to happen yeah it's 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 people just this whole cancel cult culture bullshit that we're in now it just it bothers me because especially with the internet and social media you should be able to express yourself truthfully and how you really feel and now it's like oh god the fucking peppy le pew's getting canceled because that there's some sort of race in that and and there's race in everything now right there's you do one thing wrong someone finds a tweet from when you were fucking 12 years old, not even grown up, and you canceled. And I just think, yeah. I, I'm not for it. I, I, I don't dig the cancel culture. I think it's a fucking stupid thing. Just let people be, let people be funny. People are so sensitive these days. They take everything yeah. up the, you know, 
they take everything up the ass, no pun intended, Jane. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's just like, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, but there is one more question that you were gonna, that I asked you that you were gonna um, tell me a story when right. I asked okay. you, have you so, got recognized? Yes. So I had like, before this thing happened, I had only been recognized and I used that really loosely, which was one time I was eating in a diner in LA with my friend who also did porn and we were at like the counter and a guy was next to us and he said, can you pass the hot sauce? So I passed it to him and he said, thanks, big fan, by the way, of both of you. So for, he didn't say our names or anything. He but didn't he- like, I but yeah, it but was that like, oh. was his entry. He was yeah, like, like, he watches a lot of porn. Like he's seen both of us yep. in a video. So I was like, that was cool. But other than that, never been recognized except at like a convention until here's the here's story. the story. That's okay, like, tell me. So build up. Okay, so it's like seven in the morning, not even like six forty five maybe, and I'm taking out Scout for a walk. Um, just wearing my pajamas like I just got out of bed and I'm walking him and this guy is like walking towards my building I assume like he lived there or whatever he's coming from somewhere yeah and scout is like pulling over to him to say hi so I, he like pet him and he was like oh cute dog and you know I said thanks and then I start walking around the block and we get back and we're walking back like into my building up the driveway and that guy is like there again. And what was he just like waiting? Did it seem? I don't know. I think, yeah. Or he just happened to be there. He was lingering. Um, he like walked up to me from behind and he said, excuse me. And I turned around and he was like, um, can I pay you $40 to make out with me? <laughs> And I was just like, no. <laughs> and he just walked over. Walking Jesus over. Christ, Scout. Yeah. Why'd you have to go walking over to a freaking idiot and crazy, make right? him feel comfortable enough to ask me a question like that? It's just oh. like, I was so fucking annoyed by that. Yeah. Because it's like, first of all, the audacity. Yep, the like, audacity. Thing to ask a stranger. Like, you're soliciting me. Dude, I'm not a prostitute. And if I was, you would fucking know it because I would tell you or I would right. be on a website like, but just don't solicit people like that. Yeah, it's that's so, so fucked up to, to walk up to you and just assume that that was something you would be willing to do. Yeah. And like $40, it's like, just listen, like, for, like that. Like, first, bro. if you're going to solicit me, I'm worth a lot more than fucking $40, yeah, like 40 motherfucker. To possibly get fucking COVID from Yeah, me. what the... F- I forgot. We're in the middle of a freaking quarantine. We're in a pandemic. Like, what the fuck? Not- oh, my God. Jesus, Shane. So that happened, and I got really annoyed that day, and I went on a little rant on social media, and I was like, you know, guys, this is why I say, like, please, if you see me, just don't approach me in public, like... I appreciate that you're a fan, but it's just, I'm not comfortable being approached. Like, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to take a photo. I just want to live my life. So you're normal. open with that. You let that out there. Cause I feel yeah. like people have to, Jane, there's no way, you know, you got over a half a million followers. There's no way with, with your awards, with all the creations you've made, right? There's zero chance that people don't recognize you. So maybe they're it's, listening it's, to your rules. Yeah. And then, People, nobody has like come up to me and like said anything like oh I'm a fan of you which like yeah I don't know how I would necessarily feel about that because it's kind of jarring like I'm living in my normal life and then someone just brings me to like yeah my online life, right 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 like, okay and you're tr- that th- those are the moments you detach right yeah. and you're just trying to be yeah so yeah. I put that out there on social media I was just like don't come up to me please if you see me And then this was like a couple hours later, I was coming back from another walk with Scout and there was like these four guys, like young guys, um, but they were like tall and they were all coming towards like where I was like walking up the driveway. So I always get a little bit nervous when I just see groups of guys in public. Yeah. Just like. Yeah. Uh, oh, are you gonna harass me? Are you gonna fucking chase and kill See, me? See, that's like, a downside. You know. Yeah, you never know. Um, so I was just, you know, walking, minding my business, like 
not make eye contact because I didn't want anyone to talk to me. Yep. And then I almost got to my building and this one guy calls out, he's like, are you Jane Wild? And I was like, <laughs> so the one day that I basically say like, guys, don't fucking approach me. You got approached. The first time ever I got called out by name in public and at my fucking building. No but you less. gotta, you gotta understand, right? Like the soliciting thing isn't okay, and the the the, the approaching you all the time isn't okay. But there's yeah. gonna, you're gonna have fans. It's just impossible. Yeah. Like so you, like, you are a movie star technically, just in in the porn industry. You yeah. Know? So in that moment, I froze for a second, and I was just like, yeah. <laughs> And That's went, me. Oh, like, oh, <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. And then they were asking for a photo. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Because they were respectful. Yep. And they weren't fucking calling me. If they come with a good vibe, then. Yeah, it was just like, okay, like, and you know what? Like, I guess it was cool. It's That's where I was like, I don't know how I really feel about this. Maybe I just mean like don't come up to me and be a fucking annoying or be a fucking creepy person. Yeah, like, yeah. And there's so many creeps in this like, world. Yeah. Don't try to talk to me for more than like one minute because like, say hi, I'm, I'm a fan or whatever. Or hi. Yeah, and then walk say away. Hi, And then do your thing. Like yeah. I don't even talk to like my friends that much. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. And that's exaggeration. I mean, I'm an but, introvert too. So uh, yeah. my favorite place to be is home, you know, yeah, with my other dog you. and, yeah. yeah, I just don't like having like long conversations with people that I don't really know. Like, I have social anxiety. If you didn't realize, right, when we were at the um, Summer Fridays together, yeah. I noticed that we were very alike in a sense that That's me and you bad. were both sitting on the couch and we weren't really talking. Like, we, we, yeah. we, we talked, we met each other, but we were both just kind of smoking and just like, I get social anxiety in a lot of yeah. situations, which you wouldn't think, but I do. I had, yeah, I had a lot of anxiety that day. Um, I feel like if I was drinking, maybe I would have been like a little more. Yeah, looser. I wasn't drinking either. Yeah, because I had to work early the next day, um, and it was a lot of people. And I'm not a lot, a lot of people. Small space. Everyone's yep. like having little conversations, and I'm yep. just like, where do I fit in? I don't want to just like walk up to people. Well, you fit in with me because we had already met before then. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, I'll just stick to the couch. Yeah, for- we'll just sit here together. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. At that moment, I was like, okay, guys, this is my new disclaimer. Um, If you're respectful and you don't, like, scare me or bombard me, like, I'm more than happy to, like, say hi, what's up, and, like, thank you for being a fan. Um, But if if I'm eating or if I'm, like, at the grocery store. Yeah, don't fucking interrupt me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, And if I I agree with that. Like, just let me be, please. Then he'll go on you, and then I have to, like, it's a whole thing. Yeah. Respect to my Res- friends. <laughs> respect, Always my friends. Respect. So, Jane, we're, we're hitting the time. Um, I will talk to you on my own time, obviously, after this. And in July, we'll meet up and maybe we could do some sort of fun YouTube type video where we're not interviewing, but something fun together. Love and that. I love that you're an East Coast girl. I love that you're smart and have a good head on your shoulders. Um, I'm so glad to have you on the show. Thank you, Kirill, my booby. I love you. Thank you for introducing me to Jane. Yeah, we love you. We love you. Assholes live forever. They do. (laughs) New website coming soon. Yep. Um, But yeah, like this was super fun. This was just such a good conversation. It really was. I enjoyed the questions. I enjoyed talking to you. You have a great spirit. And great Thank energy. you. I never even go this long. Usually my episodes are like twenty what? minutes, but we would just twenty minutes. We, you, literally, like an hour. Yeah, usually, but that. but it was easy. You know what I mean? Once you're talking to someone that you, you vibe with, conversation is easy. If I'm gonna do a podcast, like I mean, twenty minutes is like you're barely scratching the surface. Right. You don't get into any detail with you. Hours. I could talk to you for three hours, but I agree. You know, but we will. On our own time. Yeah. I'm and excited. I love you. And I love you, Scout. Let's say bye with Scout. Scout, Woo! Scout, say bye. You wake up. He's like, I'm sleeping. Leave me the fuck alone. All right. Oh, he does it. Oh, he does a stretch. He likes to belly rubs. Yeah. All right, babe. I love you. 
Thank Love you so you. much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Dude. No, it was so fun. And I will. When is this uh, dropping, Hurley? Wednesday. Wednesday, right? 11, 12. So Wednesday it'll be out. And cool. um, I'll send it to you right away. Yeah. And uh, like I said, and like you said, I enjoyed this very much. Thank you again for coming on. You're the best. Awesome. And I'll see yeah. you soon. Okay. Thank you for tuning in to Let's Be Clear. Um, Jane's amazing. She's a beautiful person inside and out. And, you know, I really wanted to talk to somebody that is on a total different spectrum, you know, than me. I don't like I said, I don't even fucking have sex. Never mind uh, everything she does. So she was very she's an East Coast girl. Very interesting to talk to. And I enjoyed it. I hope you all do as well. Follow, like, subscribe comment and all that jazz thank you guys so much for tuning in i hope you enjoy this episode bye bitches yes i'm in the zona if i see her then i got a bro yes i am a dog with these diamonds on my collar